So you're looking for a way to entertain your family? Well, how about a place with plenty of affordable family attractions, all the natural beauty of Southern California, and more places to have your lunch than you can count. Coming up next on Irvine Scene. Welcome to this edition of Irvine Scene. I'm Dave Eirich, and today we're standing at the Irvine Regional Park. In July 2010, the Irvine Company donated 20,000 acres to the Orange County Parks. 113 years ago, James Irvine II donated this very land we're standing on as California's very first regional park. Maureen is one of the many park rangers responsible for the daily stewardship of this park. This is an area that used to be referred to as the picnic grounds. Can you tell me a little bit about the history of how the picnic grounds became the Irvine Regional Park? Well, as you mentioned, Dave, about 113 years ago, James Irvine II donated this land that we're standing on. This particular piece was his favorite piece of property. Oh. And he spent a lot of time here in the picnic grounds, and there were often many people who came onto his property trespassing. And, but he enjoyed this area. This was one of his favorite spots. So people used to come here and they would have picnics here without his permission ostensibly. They would enjoy the areas of picnic ground. And his response to that, his choice, was to designate this area for picnics for the people of Orange County. How much did the county actually pay for this land? Well, it really put the county back, but uh, they had to pay a dollar. <laughs> so now we can go take a look at the park and see some of the things that they have here. Are you ready to show us around? Let's go. Maureen, there are two types of hikers. Ones that want to be close to the restrooms and then the others that want to be here. Where are we now? We're actually in the wilderness section of Irvine Regional Park, where we have a number of trails that intertwine okay. throughout. And uh, on these trails, we get mostly mountain bikers, equestrians, and some of our more hardy hikers. So if you come to the park, you can uh, enjoy all the amenities of the park, or you can come over here and enjoy some of the real natural outdoor beauty that's available for the uh, outdoor enthusiast. Exactly. Steve and his partner John have been providing concessions and amenities for the park since 1986. Steve took us on a tour of one of the park's most recent additions. So Steve, what are we going to take a look at now? We're going out to take a look at the fourth grade California History Education Program area. Um, it's a six stop area for the kids. We bring them on field trips. It takes about two hours. Um, they'll come out here and learn what it was like to live in the 1850s during the gold rush. Excellent. And how did this program come into existence? Well, we've seen other programs that pertain to fourth grade, but we hadn't seen one that pertains to the Gold Rush area and what made people travel to California in the 1850s. It's a six-stop program. Mm -hmm. They'll learn how to pan for gold. Mm -hmm. They'll learn the transportation of the era, which was the covered wagon as well as walking, mm -hmm. uh, what it was like to live um, as a miner in the time as well as uh, a water wheel shows where power came from at the time and how they powered different things. So Steve, this is one of the stops during the program. And what is, what is this place? This is a replica of one of the 1850s boom towns that popped up along the way when people are making their way to California. All right, so and we, can we take a walk through? Sure. Let's take a look. This is the sheriff's office Every we're town walking had to into. have a sheriff's office. Hey, because people sometimes don't behave. It was, it so was there's people, a gym. Exactly. Okay, Back in the gold rush, people didn't behave. Now, uh -huh. along the way here, you'll see some of the pictures that have to do with uh, what people might have saw on their way to California in the 1850s. Oh, wow. There, there are, so there are quite a few pictures of Native Americans. Correct. Definitely then, saw that. And then this room is a. This is our map room. Uh, the ones here to the left, the white maps here, are what uh, somebody might have been trying to come to California in 1850, what they'd be working off of. Okay, that, so that's a, uh, a that map of the time. Map. Correct. And, and these show some of the routes that were, uh, that a lot of people used to get here in California in the 1850s. Uh, the Oregon Trail was one, the California Trail leading to the gold uh, rush area. And Every course, town had to have a saloon. Right. You know, a place for people to gather, 
talk about what's going on in town, blow right. off a little steam after a hard day's work. Nice. Thanks, Katie. So, Steve, tell me about uh, this spot behind us. This is the miners' camp where okay. we bring the kids out and teach them what it was like to live in the 1850s during the gold rush area. When they weren't panning for gold, they were back at camp and how rough it was living out of a tent, hunting for food, fishing, cooking their food over open flame. So, Steve, this is cool. Yeah, this is our water wheel here. And as you can see, it's powering our sawmill. Okay. Of course, to cut wood in the 1850s, that would uh, be used for building of the boom towns and our mine shafts. And this is where the kids get a feel for what it's like to be inside a mine shaft. So Steve, what do the kids do here? This is where the kids come out and actually learn to pan for gold. Steve, I found some. The park also offers a favorite pastime for many children, the ever-popular pony ride. How long does it take to get certified as a pony walker? Well, typically we just uh, give you the rope, give you some instructions and put you out here. It's pretty simple, <laughs> a lot like walking a big dog. You know, you're right. And uh, when can people come to uh, ride ponies here? We have the ponies open Tuesday through Sunday, uh, 10 to 4 on the weekends and 11 to 4 on the weekdays. Oh, the pony counts the number of laps. Yes. So Dan, so Dan is done. Dan is done. He can count to three. Okay, Dan, come on, let's bring it in. <laughs> Pony valet coming through. <laughs> One great way to see much of the park is to board the Irvine Park Railroad train. Maureen and I enjoyed the excursion with one of the train's knowledgeable tour guides, Rob. As we embark on our little tour of the park, tell people what they can do when they come here. What does the park have to offer? Well, Irvine Regional Park is one of the most popular parks in the OC Park system. Okay. And there are, there's a reason for that. It has a number of things that you can do when you're here. One of the biggest draws here is our picnicking. We have really many people that love to come here and do their family picnicking. Last year, we had over 800,000 park visitors to our park. So we, so that tells you right there how many people that do come to Irvine Regional Park. Right, yeah. They love it. They And here over here we have, this is part of the Irvine, uh, railroads feature their uh, the history of the mining miners. We talked a little bit about the uh, historic program for the fourth graders, but for everybody who comes, uh, this is actually pretty interesting uh, replica uh, and pretty aesthetically interesting as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, another feature that we offer here at the park is uh, we have some shelters that are group areas that uh, families can uh, reserve and have their big events, whether it's a oh. retirement party or an 80th birthday or uh, simply just celebrating something special for their family. Very nice. And do you, now if you want to uh, do an event here, do you have to call ahead? Do you have to reserve? How does that work? Yes, we do have a reservation system and you can go online and um, by going to www.ocparks.com. Awesome. And uh, what's, uh, you know, how what, what's the biggest party you could have here? You, I mean, I don't know, guess. About 350 people, I believe, that our biggest uh, group area holds. Very nice. And, uh, and of course, just two people could come. And now, are you allowed to feed? We're coming up on the lake. Can you feed the ducks? Well, we don't encourage feeding of the okay. ducks, right. but we do have a lot of park visitors that that's do feed good. the dogs. <laughs> this is our lower lake, and you can fish in this part of the lake, and, but you do need a fishing license to do that. Oh, okay. Now, um, what, uh, what what kind of fish can you catch in here? Um, we stock with catfish. Oh, you do? Yes. How interesting. So do you have a pretty good chance of catching a fish? Um, I believe so. We get a, lot, yeah. we get a number of uh, people out here uh, attempting to get their fish, so yeah. And now, if I want to come out of here, I mean, can I just pretty much bring my pole and some barbecue uh, you know, the, the brick, briquettes and yes. I just plan on catching my lunch. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now uh, on our left here too, I, I noticed this, uh, this lovely waterfall feature. You know what? Maybe Rob could tell us about that waterfall feature. Rob, tell me about that waterfall. Well, during the 1930s, during Franklin Roosevelt's institution of the, uh, of the New Deal, the Works Progress Administration uh, was developed to put men back to work, and the waterfall was built by the WPA, uh, as well as other infrastructure items like uh, some picnic tables, cement picnic tables, and some other items in the park, but the waterfall was a part of that project. 
So there you a little piece of history right there, back from the New Deal. We have a lot right of Right here in Orange here. County. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now on the left, yeah. We have the paddle boats. Okay. Th that uh, one of our concessionaires has, and they're available to rent. Okay. The, over there, we also have a, what we call the, the Bolt House. That has a store uh, meaning as well. A, oh. An original original building over there, the Bolt House. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Uh, hey, Rob, tell us about the Bolt House. The Bolt House was built in 1914 because the Upper Lake was built in 1914. And before the paddle boats were introduced, uh, Redwood rowboats were used in the lake uh, until after World War II, I think probably going into the 50s. And bicycles were, uh, were used after 1932. And before 1932, donkey rides were offered to the guests here at the park. Now we're coming around the corner here, and uh, I've read quite a bit about the, the uh, importance of the oaks to, I guess, this area in general, but certainly the park. Do you, you want to tell me a little bit about um, about why the oaks are so renowned here? Well, I can tell you that part of the stipulation when James Irvine II donated this land to the county, it was to preserve the oaks that were already here, the oak oh. woodlands. So that's something that's very important. Nice, yeah, okay. And, I, and then you look around, I mean, the park, uh, aesthetically, uh, this park is beautiful. Yes. I mean, there's, there's a lot to look at. And, uh, this train ride itself is really very nice. <laughs> We're going through quite a bit of, there's a lot of trees, obviously, and they're well kept. Is that true? Yes, yes, we, we do take care of, that's one of our jobs, is to maintain uh, the park's uh, resources. Right. It's a big part of our job. Now, the other thing I noticed, uh, you're going to point out over here something spe specific? Or? Right. This is our interpretive center here on the left. That okay. is manned by our volunteers. So we opened it up on the weekends, and it has all our, a lot of historical information about the park, as oh. well as our wildlife, information about our wildlife that roam in our parks. Oh, so it's kind of a, a little museum or like an information center. Yes, yes. You can find out a lot oh. of information by that. Oh, very nice. There's this nice paved path here. I assume this is bicycle friendly. Absolutely. We have a lot of bicyclists. Uh, at the boathouse, you can rent um, bicycles, and there's a variety of different types of bicycles. Oh. So you'll see people in three-wheel bicycles and just regular uh, bicycles, two-man. But we also have a lot of walkers who come in here every morning. Sure. And we also have a lot of dog walkers that come in here. So you can walk your dog at this park? Yes, you can. You must have your dog on a leash at all times. Okay. But we encourage people and their pets to come out here and, and take advantage of the beautiful oaks that we have here. Very nice. Now, uh, this this area we're going through now is uh, is very scenic. Rob, why don't you tell us about this area? Well, one of the privileges about being on the train going through this area of the park, this is part of the, the original 160 acres that James huh. Irvine II had donated back in 1897. And it features probably the oldest coastal life oak tree in the park. It goes back about 500 years. And also the, the oldest structure in the park uh, we just passed. The oldest structure in the park, and what uh, what was that used for? It was a birdbath, 1913, and oh. it still operates today after almost 100 years. Cleanest birds in the park. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Now we're on our way back. We're circling back around the lake. Um, we've mentioned bicycling, hiking. You can uh, walk with your dog. There's the horseback rides. There's fishing. There's the paddle boating. There's picnicking. Yeah. Have I missed any other activities that uh, you can enjoy here at the park? Um, well, we did uh, spoke a little bit about hiking, but we mm -hmm. do have trails within the perimeter of the park. Oh. We, we have a, what we call our, uh, which is our most popular trail, the Horseshoe Loop Trail, Horseshoe oh. Loop Trail. Okay. And that is uh, follows the perimeter of the park, and you can go around, it's about three miles, oh. and that's a very popular hiking trail. I heard that there's a uh, a creek that sort of splits the park. I, I, is that true? It's the Santiago Creek Trail. Okay, and that in and ostensibly that kind of uh, separates the part of the park that is uh, developed, for lack of a better word, and and the other part is. Yes, that's the Santiago Creek. Yes. I'm okay. Correct. On the other side, we do have more uh, miles of trails that actually connect to other parks in our oh. system. Yes. Oh, so there's a whole hiking trail yeah. system. Those are more of the hardcore people that like to do a longer hike. Nice. Now, I, you know, I did actually uh, read, uh, there's the horse, there's the pony rides, but are there also other uh, equine opportunities? Yes, we have uh, country trails and you can uh, rent a horse. Oh. They have uh, some people that will lead you out on horses oh. and take you out on our trails that are outside the park. Oh, no kidding. So yeah, you on could... the other side of that creek that we were talking about. 
Oh, very nice. So those are the three mile trails, but how long does that take? Well, or, um, they have different levels, so they'll take okay. you out for depending on what you want to do, two hours or an hour. Oh, how nice, right. I did not know that. Yes. All right. And as we head back in, coming back to the station, is there any other things you think uh, our people should know about the amenities offered here at the park? There's certainly a lot. Well, we have one big amenity, and that's the Orange County Zoo. Well, thank you very much, Maureen, for showing us the park. You're very welcome, and come back again. All right, and thank you, Rob. You're welcome, Dave. Now, you didn't think we'd come to the Irvine Regional Park without visiting one of the park's most prominent features, the Orange County Zoo. One compelling reason to visit the zoo is to witness the animal training program in action. While the primary purpose is for the benefit of the animals, visitors will benefit by the fascinating interactions between animals and zookeepers. We were lucky enough to be shown around by Lauren, whose love of animals is evident in her every task. So tell me about Herbie the opossum. Herbie is an opossum, just like you'd find in your backyard. Uh, what makes them really special is that there are only marsupials, so they have a pouch that they carry their young in. Just like a kangaroo. Just like a kangaroo. When they're born, though, they're only about the size of a grain of rice. Really? They're tiny. And wow. Herbie's here. He's one of our orphans, so he'll spend the remainder of his life with us. Very and over nice. here, we have Willie, another one of our zoo residents. And Willie is held by? <laughs> My name is Marcy Creed Booth. I'm the education coordinator here at the zoo. Awesome. And tell me, uh, how did Willie Willie come to live here? Well, you might notice that Willie has an eye that looks a little bit different, mm -hmm. has a kind of blue color, so right. he sustained an injury. He was found on the side of the road out in Majeska Canyon, so we're oh. not quite sure what happened, but he may have hit a car windshield. Okay, and what kind of owl is this? He is a screech owl. Okay. Yeah, they're very common here in Orange County, mm -hmm. but if you take a look at Willie, he looks very much like tree bark, so you wouldn't notice this little owl up in any of the uh, trees here. Very nice. And he's very, very tiny, but he's actually full grown. Now tell me, here's another myth to debunk or not. Can they turn their head 360 degrees? Good question. No, they cannot turn it all the way around about 270 degrees. Look at me, Willie. Willie, look at me. <laughs> Very nice. Come on, Willie. Keep yes. looking at me. Good, good. Keep good. looking oh. at me. He could still see me. Yes, you're good. Thank God my mom <laughs> couldn't do this. <laughs> now, Marcy, uh, I'm lost. I can't find a children's zoo. Where, where is it? You're close. And in the children's zoo, you'll find lots of fun farm animals. We have some goats and sheep that the kids can feed. And we have a great little petting zoo where the kids can go inside and oh. interact, brush the goats. It's a lot of fun. So all the, all the animals here, they're from this region, is that true? That's correct. Okay. Most of the animals you'll find here locally. Uh, okay. This here is our mule deer. Her name is Bobby. Okay. So we see lots of mule deer here throughout Orange County. And, uh, and this mule deer lives in the petting zoo so people can actually see this close up? Yes, people can come up to the fence over here and they can give her a pet or they can even feed her some grain that we have here at the zoo for them. Bobby. Bobby, don't be angry at me because they gave you a boy's name. Aww. Good girl, <laughs> good girl, we're friends. Okay, so there are several animals in this cage and we had to be somewhat cautious when we came in because the birds behind us they have a, a behavior. What happens if they get scared? Well, behind you, we have three of our turkey vultures. Uh -huh. And unfortunately, when a turkey vulture gets frightened, uh, its behavior that it participates in is throwing up. It throws up. That's <laughs> a defense that mechanism? That is a defense mechanism for okay. these guys. Although they can be kind of gross birds, uh, I think they're one of our most fascinating here. All right, OK. So <laughs> I'm going to be very careful not to set alarms. Now, this little guy, uh, he doesn't scare me very much at all. Who's Who's this guy? This is Quillipi. Uh, Quillipi is a two-year-old North American porcupine. Okay. You tell me we're going in with a porcupine, the first thing I'm going to do is, right, it, it's going to shoot no, quills at us? You know what? That's the biggest myth most people don't know, but they don't really shoot their quills. Right now, she's really relaxed, so mm -hmm. I can even pet her, and I don't have Careful. to worry about those quills. No, see, she likes this. <laughs> 
But if something were to startle or frighten her, she's going to yeah. stand those quills upright. And those quills are really neat. They're barbed at the end, so they act somewhat like a fish hook. So if you were to brush or, you know, run into her, if she um, were to hit you, they would stick into your skin rather easily. Now, the quills, are they all quills or the long ones uh, and the, the short ones? The long ones that you're looking at on yeah. top are what we call guard hairs. So you don't have to worry about that. You okay. can see they're kind of, oh, I'm sorry, excuse oh, me. Because she makes... <laughs> How cute is that? That's, did good. you want to try feeding her a little carrot there? Yeah, no, <laughs> just a big want to carrot. watch out for those long teeth. Yes. <laughs> Quillipy. Carrot. Finger. <laughs> carrot. Talk to me. Oh, oh, oh. If I talk to what's she saying? Feed me faster. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> what did I just say to her? <laughs> I'm feeding as fast as I can. <laughs> She's good. Can you say hi? Oh. oh, you see that? That was leave us alone. We're having a moment. <laughs> Let's leave without making them throw up. Absolutely. Let's go. <laughs> Enter Amanda, the resident mountain lion who's new to this animal training. Only about one year, and here she comes down to enjoy the meat. Amanda's another one of our orphans. She's okay. been with us since she was a couple years old. Sit, Amanda, sit. Good. And so she's about 12 now, and they'll live to be about 15 to 20 years. So the training that we're doing with her is to make sure that she's as healthy as possible, Amanda Dale. So how many, how many is that in cat years? <laughs> as big as she is, she's actually a member of the small cat family. She's got the same mechanism in her throat that allows her to purr just like a house cat would. Okay, now how much does she weigh? She weighs, she goes between 90 to 95 pounds. So she okay. is a pretty big cat still. I wouldn't yeah. want to run into her hiking. Yeah. Amanda typically trains two to three times a day. She receives two and a half pounds of the Nebraska, that meat that's got all the nutrients that she needs. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what she really prefers during her training sessions. So we break up her diet amongst two or three training sessions. What is the Nebraska? They look like meatballs. They do look like meatballs. It looks like ground beef. But like I mentioned, in the wild, she'd be eating all aspects of the animal. So she needs to have all those nutrients to be healthy. And they make it for our felines, our canines, even our birds of prey. If I needed to look at something on the backside of Amanda, rather than having her run back and forth, I can have her target. Good, target. And that allows me to see her hindquarters Why her nose is distracted on the target. And if people want to come see Amanda. We do have posted training times on the weekends. Uh, and if you don't see a posted training time, ask anybody in uniform. They'd be more than happy to tell you when we'll be training her. They're wild animals, and she <laughs> she's no exception to that. So they probably like wild people. Yeah, probably. Maybe that's why they like me so much. <laughs> <laughs> We do have eagles locally. Um, we've had some people say that they've seen them in the area up by Irvine Lake. And of huh. course, we've got the famous free bird that's been coming around. Oh, <laughs> she, she heard us talking. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me Olivia's story. Absolutely. This is Olivia, and she's become very famous lately. She's had a little friend come to the zoo to visit. So there's a tree nearby where he has been seen perching. Um, and lately, he's been seen flying overhead. So it's really neat when it's in the area because Olivia really starts vocalizing. She moves around a whole lot. Um, my favorite part is our golden eagle. Unfortunately, doesn't really care for the visitor, we think. Okay. And will start ripping up its nest, maybe ripping at the astroturf or the bark at its exhibit. So it's kind of neat to see the interaction with the wild bald eagle as well as our captive animals. <laughs> Olivia can fly, but unfortunately she has vision problems. So they tried releasing her, uh, not successfully. So she will stay with us for the remainder of her life in captivity. Uh, and this other eagle, he, he uh, they talk back and forth. They vocalize they each They vocalize other. back and forth absolutely what do you like think I they said, said what are you doing down there let's go and it's interesting that it only has really come down and we've seen it interacting with olivia because we do have two bald eagles we've got clink as well and it doesn't seem to take an interest over there at least. <laughs> this is my theory this other eagle not so attractive that's why olivia the blind one uh -oh. likes him This is Yo-Yo. Yo-Yo is one of our two black bears here at the Orange County Zoo. 
She's 11 years old and she weighs in at about 400 pounds. Locally, bears in this area don't typically hibernate because there's food available year round, but oh. they do spend much more time napping. We still do training with them every single day. So Yo-Yo here especially loves to get up for her training sessions. All of our training is for husbandry reasons. It does put on a nice show for the public because they get to see things. We'll try to get her to do some behavior. She's a little tired. We'll try a bite first. We'll get her up and moving. Okay. Bite. Good girl. So by asking her to do that behavior, as a keeper, it allows us to examine her teeth, make sure that they're not any worse oh. or that she doesn't have a cavity or anything like that. She never misses a meal. She's always more than happy to come down for us. And the biggest part of their training, um, just like with a lot of the animals, is getting them comfortable to coming over to you at any given time. Yo-Yo here loves her meat. It's over here. Can oh. you get up? Yes, Can you come up? Good this is, this girl. Is... Standing up with 400 pounds is probably not... A lot not, of work, yeah. especially in the winter. But this gives us a chance to look at all of her pads as her feet, as well as her underside, look for anything that might be wrong with her. Their claws they use mostly for digging and climbing. Everybody thinks that they're these big carnivores, yeah. um, but most of their diet is typically vegetation, even in the wild. That's good to know right now. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> And here comes a larger oh bear. Goodness, I can't believe he got up for you guys. You got it. This is Nacho. Uh, Nacho's a 13-year-old black bear, and okay. he weighs about 550 pounds, which is really large for a black bear. And a lot of people I forgot to mention um, look at these bears and say, um, that's not a black bear. It's brown in color. Right. They don't realize that the black bears come in quite a different color scale. So we've got the blonde, blue, gray, jet black. This is a cinnamon coloration, which is really common for this area. Everybody thinks they see grizzly bears when they go out camping. We don't have grizzly bears. We only have black bears in California. Um, on the weekends, we've started posting our training time. So you can ask oh. anybody in uniform if it's not posted and we'd be more than happy to share with you when we do do the feedings with these guys. Nice. He's going to go back to bed. <laughs> right here, close to the food source, which I'm, which I'm hoping is not me. No. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Irvine Scene. I'm your host, Dave Iyer, and I hope you'll come down here to the Irvine Regional Park and enjoy a train ride, the zoo, and remember to bring your lunch because there's a picnic table waiting for you.